Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. As always, we're presented by Bun and Chevrolet, and we're so glad you're with us wherever you are. If you're joining us here in Santa Barbara, California on television, we welcome you and all the different social media platforms. And of course, the podcast that uh, you can search for Good Life Conversations if you want to listen to the podcast. And then the website, goodlifetelevision.org. There's some just amazing people, all walks of life, so inspirational, and we just hope you'll, you'll find us. Um, and we're glad you're with us. I'm so excited about my guest today, uh, 1998 Olympic gold medalist Tara Lipinski is with me. Welcome, Tara. Thank you. Glad to be here. So yeah, it was it was fun to just kind of read your story. Um, just and, and then I want to get to the 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 Crackle TV show, which is called Wedding Talk. We're going to get to that in a minute. We love the we love our friends at Crackle. And uh, and that's a that's a great new show that Tara's working on. But take us back a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, just like kind of a little bit about your upbringing. And I know you were like a three year old roller skater, from what I read, or you you, you started early. But to take us back a little bit. Yeah, I, I started very early at three years old, roller skating, and then moving into ice skating when I was six and just sort of fell in love with the sport. I'd tried a lot of different sports as a kid. My parents put me in everything. And, and this is one of the ones that just stuck. So I, you know, pretty much it was, you know, a love affair from the start and um, not always the easiest, but, you know, you have your ups and downs and your obstacles to overcome. But, you know, skating is, is my life to this day. So 30 something years later, it's, it's still considered home to me. And um, I'm just so lucky now I've transitioned from, you know, an athlete and going to the Olympics and being so proud to be an Olympian and obviously um, accomplishing all of my goals in my competitive career to moving on to the professional world and then um, really finding my way uh, when I left the sport um, from actually skating on the ice to to find what was next and now being a broadcaster and analyst it's it, it feels so great to still be part of my sport just in a different way, but it's, you know, a lifelong passion. Yeah. And not everybody can make that transition from the co competing to the broadcast booth. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. Did you, did it just, <laughs> did it come, I mean, was it natural for you? Is it, is it something you've had to really practice? I mean, what's, what's that like? I think, you know, it was, it was a nice organic transition for me since I started so young at, at 15 years old, pretty much when I retired from competitive skating, then moved to professional skating and really learned the entertainment world, um, even though it was just on ice. But at the time, skating was so popular and um, there were so many opportunities that I was working outside of the sport, working with television networks on specials and hosting and um, presenting and voiceover work and acting that um, I really spread my wings into that world of entertainment, which felt comfortable because as a skater, you're still a performer and you're still, you know, skating in front of a sold out arena to an audience and, and portraying a character. So I feel like all the transitions were, were softened for me. And eventually over time, and so many years in the business since I was a teenager, I, I really just learned the trade, loved it. And, um, you know, it, it became a natural um, next step for me to, to head into hosting and broadcasting. And um, it, is, it is a difficult transition. And either sometimes I feel like it works or it just doesn't work. Um, and for me, it, it felt, again, like home. Um, you know, similar feelings that I had as an athlete where you get that adrenaline rush of being on live television and performing. So um, I feel like over time and all of those years, you know, 20 years um, in the making, it's it's been the right choice for me. Yeah, well, the, yeah, that's fantastic. Take us back for a second. So we're now 25 years later. So this the 1998 gold medal. Uh, which I think captured like the attention of the world. And my wife I said, I'm having Tara Lipinski on. And my wife just lit up this week and she's like, Aww. what? You're kidding. Like so many people followed that so intensely, so, but you're 15 years old at the time. I mean, you're, I mean, and, and I correct me if, the, if I have this wrong, but you were the youngest gold medalist in figure skating history. Is that right? Yes, uh, in individual sport in a Winter Olympics. So 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy surreal record that I, that I hold. And, um, still to this day, I'm like, wow, that that's me. That's, that's insane that I was able to do that. But, you know, that was sort of the story of my career. I was so young and came up so quickly in the sport and was always the youngest, was always the baby, was always trying to prove myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to, to look back on my career now as I am not so young and, (laughs) you know, look back at, at those times, but, you know, I am so proud of, of what I was able to accomplish and, and, um, and my career. Yeah. Well, you should be, I, I, just real quick, I was just thinking about this. So you're 15 years old this winter olympics and you're about to go out for the like the big skate do you do do you have any memories for like or what are your memories or 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 maybe another question would be like what are you thinking about like when you're about the whole the whole whole trick of it is is you you don't really want to think too much um overthinking at that point is you know deadly for an athlete, just because your body has been trained for this moment, it knows exactly what to do. It's done so many repetitions. It's, it's, you know, gone to a rink every day for, you know, so many years doing the same thing. Um, And it really does come down to the mental aspect, the mental game and, and finding that strength in the moment to overcome all the nerves and all the fears of realizing this is, this is your moment. This is when your life can change. And that's just a lot to deal with. And especially since I was so young, it was, it was definitely overwhelming. Um, but I was, I was terribly nervous. I had never felt sort of pressure like that before. Obviously, you know, you really couldn't prepare for that. I had gone to so many other events, world championships, national championships. And over the years you become accustomed to that, but the Olympic games, no one really prepares you for. And it's such an individual experience of how you, you know, how you see it through your own eyes and, and how you deal with that pressure. So, you know, for me, it was just gritting my teeth and winging it a bit of trying to deal with, with all the emotions I was feeling. I was, you know, so tired at that point. I was so overwhelmed. I was, you know, I knew what was at stake and, that's just hard, I think, for your mind to kind of grapple with and take in and you realize, wow, I have four minutes and my life can change. Like, just don't trip. So it's a, (laughs) it's a, it's a, it's a crazy surreal thing to go through. And, but it's great because now in the rest of my life, I'll always look back on that moment and think anything that I think is hard now, I just remember the feeling of skating to center ice with my leg shaking and feeling like I was, was very unwell. Um, you know, that <laughs> if I could get through that, I can get through anything. Seriously. And it brought so much joy to so and exhilaration to so, many, to so many people. And you got, yeah, you got a puppy there. You got a so, pup. You got a pup who's not the most well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so like right after, like when you, when you won the gold, I mean, do you, was it like, what was it? What was it like, like that? night the week after the like what what was you it was definitely such a whirlwind and you know for the first week I feel like I slept a total of a couple hours and was sort of delirious and still pinching myself um that this actually happened because you dream about it for so many years and then at 1101 to 1102 your life completely changes and and you have accomplished that said dream and it's just one of those those moments that you want to keep savoring because you know that it's fleeting and you know that this is the best best feeling that you will get in this moment um from from your sport so it's 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 such an interesting um it's such an interesting few days i'll say that because i just remember being on cloud nine and just not wanting the feeling to ever end and you know scott hamilton you know an olympic champion in his own right, always told me, he's like, Tara, don't worry though, that feeling will never go away. You'll always keep pinching yourself. And it, and it is a, it is the truth. I always laugh about this with Scott now because, you know, 25 years later, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, wait, did that actually happen to me? That's so amazing. (laughs) Like, how did I do that? That's great. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. Oh, that's so fun. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about Scott and some of your, just real quickly on, in, in terms of your, in your, skating influences i know you i read something here where you talked about 
Scott and a couple others that had been significant for you. But what what was the what were those relationships like, kind of as you came up? So no, I feel like I was I was so fortunate to have so many people that were in the sport that I looked up to, whether it was Chris Yamaguchi or Scott Hamilton, or even just my training meets, Todd Eldridge, so many incredible talented skaters that really paved the way before me. And then to be able to be mentored in a way, not that they coached me or anything, but just to be able to watch their careers unfold. And and they were the ones that inspired me to think someday, maybe I could go to an Olympic games. Maybe I could win an Olympic medal that, you know, I, I just feel grateful that they were, you know, incredible people in their own right that gave and really amazing advice. And that then in the future, I was able to, to work with them. Um, I toured with Scott Hamilton and Christy Yamaguchi, you know, again, all these pinch me moments that I never thought would happen where I look back and I have a picture of me at Stars on Ice, which was a touring company at the time and my little blossom hat in the 90s taking a picture with Scott Hamilton and Christy Yamaguchi and then fast forward six seven years later and I'm working with them so you know our world of figure skating is small but it is a tight knit community and and family yeah it's such a intense deal like I I get nervous just watching it like I'm I I tense up a little bit. it's like it's kind of the same way with gymnastics in the Olympics I feel like you're like how do number one how in the world do they do this but number two just like I'm, I feel tense like just I know well it, it is it's so nerve-wracking and again it's one of those sports it's an individual sport you don't get a lot of shots at it you know there's only a couple events a year and then the olympics comes around once every four years and you have to deal with injuries and just timing of of life and whether you are in that prime form to make an olympic team and then you get there and you have these six minutes that you know could change your life so of course you know as an athlete and then also someone watching even now as a broadcaster i'm on the edge of my seat most of the time yeah yeah I mean, think about all the things that have to line up for that to happen. Like, I mean, that that's just the, the I mean, the, the timing. Yeah, you mentioned injuries, things that are out of your control. Like, it's right. like a confluence of events have to all go your way. I mean, to, to become an Olympic champion, that just is mind boggling to me. But congratulations. It really is. Yeah, well, yeah. So take us to broadcasting and, and, and kind of, and I want to talk about the current the current project here, this crackle show called wedding talks, five new episodes. I know dropped on February 1st on chicken soup for the soul. And they're coming to crackle, but t t take us to what is this show about? What is, what interests you about this? Well, you know, now that I've been in this world for so long, obviously I've been an analyst and commentating figure skating for over a decade. And it's, it's, it's my bread and butter. It's my main gig, which I, I'm head over heels in love with just because I get to do it with Terry Gannon and my partner in crime, Johnny Weir. And it's just one of these um, jobs where it doesn't feel like a job. So um, I'm so lucky and grateful that I have that. But what, what has been great is that Johnny and I, um, after the 2014 Sochi Olympics, we really were able to branch out and have so many different opportunities come our way. We showed up the Kentucky Derby. We showed up at the Super Bowl. We were working the National Dog Show and hosting all different types of shows and then sort of moving more into, you know, entertainment um, outside of sports. So we really got so much experience in that world. And uh, we actually hosted on Food Network uh, for two seasons, uh, the Wedding Cake Championship. So it, it was funny that it was also a wedding opportunity that came through later. And this is, um, you know, a, a solo hosting job without Johnny. But when this opportunity came around for Wedding Talk, I just thought there really couldn't be a better match. You know, I'm a hopeless romantic. I loved the process of planning my own wedding. I love love. And um I love events. So it, it's, it's really fun to be steering the wheel of this show and be, be part of it because we have so many incredible people involved. We have Jose Rolone and we have Joe Meyer, renowned wedding planners that kind of give everyone the tips, the tricks, the trends. And then, you know, what I will say and preface about the show, it's not the typical wedding show that you, you would think of, of, oh, we're just showing wedding videos or we're just talking weddings. I feel like it really covers every aspect of weddings and love and planning the special day. 
And I really have never seen anything like that. Sometimes I get frustrated when I when I finish filming because I think, where was this show when I was planning uh, <laughs> my wedding? There's so many notes I have written down that if we ever do a vow renewal, now I'll know exactly what I want to do. But, um, you know, when I first thought of this show and, and I thought, oh, they're wedding videos. And it's so far from just what you would think of, you know, maybe your uncle videoing this wedding is it's really films and I can't call it wedding videos anymore. They're wedding films The the, the level of what you're visually seeing throughout this show is stunning. My husband is a sports doc director and you know so I'm very used to high-end beautiful imagery and beautiful photography and beautiful um beautiful documentaries that I get to see him do and and this just we sat down and watched the show and both of us it just blew our mind because um it, it's just stunning what you're what you're able to see in these weddings whether it's a, a couple getting off of a helicopter in Antarctica and getting married, you know, in this isolated location, or there's a couple that gets married with a volcano erupting behind them. And, you know, also just how well thought out your wedding film can be and personalized to you. And um, it's just so heartwarming. But for me, there's so many different aspects of the show that I love. Obviously, it's great for couples that are planning a wedding, you're going to get really every idea and, and see every type of wedding. But I think it's it's really nice for anyone who loves planning events because you can use these tips for that or if you just love love like I do. So my favorite part is meeting the couples, getting to know their backstory, their love story, why they chose a wedding like this, and then watching it all unfold and then seeing the wedding video, wedding film, which is, you know, the fast forward version movie form of it and you feel like you know them. So it's it's been a blast to host. That's so fun. What is there anything trending? You can, can you tip us off on anything related to the wedding industry well, right Jose, now that we know? Jose and Jove are our go-to guys for that, and um, I feel like that's what I do throughout the show. I'm just I'm the person that's constantly asking them, "Tell me, tell me more. What is what? You know, are barn weddings on their way out? Are we moving into this? Are we like what is <laughs> what is what color schemes are we in? What is changing?" And they always have such great ideas and and Love sort it. of um inspiration for what's next and and what's on trend i love it what do you love most about the legendary johnny weir how can <laughs> well, we he's summarize my best friend. he's my best friend when we met obviously we knew each other in, in the world but it was it was one of those soulmate connections where you just know that this is this is your person. And um, we have a lot of shared experiences together, obviously, throughout what we've done in the past decade of traveling the world doing this. But we also grew up in, in you know, a sport that not everyone really knows what it's like until you go through it. So we have this immediate bond and connection and just one of these friendships that's you know, one of the most special things in my life. So I would do anything for Johnny and I, and I know he would do the same for me. So it's very interesting that we get to work together, um, you know, on live television and also have this friendship. Now that's a great, Nick, you know, when that happens, when there's a friendship, I, I actually, I'm a huge Dodger fan. I grew up in Southern California and the, the current, one of the things I love about the current broadcasting uh, group it, which right it happens to be Joe Davis and Oral Hershiser is they're like best friends, yeah. Uh, you know, and they didn't set out to say, oh, "Let's make sure we're best friends." They just became best friends. Yeah, you Probably. really can't recreate it. Like when the when the yeah. chemistry and the magic's there, and you have that history, and um, you have that back and forth. It's just it's so natural and so easy. And you know, I work with so many different people throughout my career, but. You know, I sit in the booth with Johnny and it's it's like we're one, you know, we finish each other's sentences and we we have the same sort of outlook of what we want for the sport. And 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 it's just really nice to have that natural organic feeling that you're sitting next to your very best friend. Yeah, I'm sure lots of uh, I'm just uh, I'm just guessing, but I'm sure parents of young skaters want to talk to you or want to your counsel or your advice or how do you deal with that over the years? 
You know, I, I love that. I love being able to impart any type of quote unquote wisdom that I, I may have gathered through, you know, this 30 plus year venture in this sport. And, and I know I remember the days of my parents really trying to figure it out. And there's so many different ways to approach, um, you know, a sport and, and how your child is is interacting with that sport or interacting with their coaches or, or what is the best sort of plan for them. And I think obviously it's so individualized that it really depends on, on your child and on their, their goals and their dreams. And, um, you know, I think for me, at least I, I love, you know, being able to tell my story and, and, and give a little insight of what it was like for me and my parents. And we had no idea what we were doing. Um, but we stayed true to, you know, certain things where I feel like that really helped me in the long run of just like always reminding myself if I didn't want to do this anymore, that I didn't have to. And I had no pressure from my parents to feel that I, I needed to stay in the sport and always had that soft landing with them um, to know that I could go to them because there is so much pressure um, in sports in general. So I feel like, you know, anytime I can give advice to a, a parent or an athlete, you know, going through what I went through, I, I always jump at that opportunity. Yeah, that's it's that's a you know, I've heard things about this business, if you will, about yeah. that. And and maybe it's I I don't know why I keep comparing it to gymnastics, but I kind of feel like these individual sports where the young people are starting early, that there can be a lot of pressure, and you and there's probably a balance there. And it sounds like your parents handled it in a healthy way, which is if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it, you know. Right. But if you're but it's kind of thing, at least from my vantage point, it's kind of thing that if you're going to do it, you kind of have to like go all in. Yeah, you have to go all in. You gotta, you gotta put in the work because you know you and your family are probably sacrificing so much, and you're losing out on other opportunities that you could be really focusing your time on. So I feel like you always have to be checking in with yourself of, you know, is this the path I want to go down to go down? And if it is, then I really, I really gotta buckle in and and put in the work. Yeah. Wow. So broadcasting is that your as you as you look forward is that going to continue to be kind of, does that seem like your path? I think it is. I mean, I've been doing this for, for over a decade and I feel like, you know, it's, it's something I enjoy so much. Like I said, I still love being on live television, having those, those uh, nerves and that adrenaline pumping and still being able to quote unquote perform for an audience at home. And also, um, you know, I love my sport, like I said, so to be able to educate people on skating and to bring skating back to the, you know, to bring the audience back to the sport. Um, it was so popular in the, in the nineties and early two thousands. And, you know, Johnny and I really want to remind people how great skating is. So I feel like there's so many different parts of the job that I enjoy that I hope I can do for a very long time. And, and if not, still be able to host and broadcast in other areas like I have been. It's it's been fun not to just do skating specifically. Yeah, no, that's that's wonderful. Well, congrats on. <clears throat> it's kind of like you've got a couple different careers here, and a very yeah, you're still you're still I'm very you're still anything. very very young, <laughs> but you've you've got a couple different careers here that have gone. And like I said, it's rare when that happens. I. Uh, you know, as a football fan, I think about somebody like Tony Romo who had a really good career in football and he's just like perfect. Like he's the great, he's a great commentator. Like some of them aren't, you know, honestly, but, uh, but you've done really good. It is. It's so nice when you get to, you know, I, I feel the same way when you, you watch athletes, you know, then move on into that next phase and, and they do it so well that, you know, someone like Tony Romo, you, you just think, wow, you were, you were meant to do this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's fantastic. Well, follow uh, Tara Lipinski. She's on Instagram and different platforms. And of course, the Crackle Show, Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh, is Wedding Talk. And uh, like I said, five episodes dropped on Chicken Soup for the Soul. February 1st, they'll be on Crackle soon. But we love Crackle. We love this show, Wedding Talk. And, and it's it's great to have Tara Lipinski. Tara, thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. All right, and thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time.